Every motorcycle rider is familiar with the clutch lever located on the left side of the handlebar. In this video, we will understand the linkage of the clutch lever to the clutch assembly and its significance in a motorcycle. As you can see, the clutch assembly is linked to the crankshaft, which is driven by the engine. On the other side, the clutch is linked to the transmission system. The primary function of the clutch is to temporarily disconnect the engine from the gearbox. This enables smooth sliding of gears in the gearbox, allowing gear changes without stopping the engine. So, how is the clutch able to disengage and engage the power? To understand that, let's dive into the internal assembly of a clutch. The clutch basket is the outermost part of the clutch assembly. As we saw earlier, it is connected to the crankshaft and rotates whenever the engine is running. However, it is not connected to the transmission, so it does not transfer power straight to the gearbox. Another major component of the clutch, known as the clutch inner hub, is assembled inside the clutch basket. It is connected to the transmission system and therefore spins with the gears in the gearbox. This means we have the inner hub that spins with the transmission and the clutch basket that spins with the engine power. With this setup, if we insert a connector between these two components, the engine power can be transferred to the gearbox. Removing the connector will disconnect the power. While inserting and removing the connector, we have assumed both the clutch basket and the inner hub are stationary, but in reality, they typically spin at different RPMs. Inserting a solid connector between two non-synchronized spinning components is nearly impossible. So engineers came up with a brilliant solution and divided the connector into two separate components. One of them engages with the clutch basket and rotates with it, but it does not interfere with the inner hub. It can also slide sideways due to the design of the basket and tabs. Another connector is designed to engage with the inner hub. Now let's assume the engine is running, which causes the clutch basket to spin along with the connector engaged to it. Now let's slide the connectors toward each other until they're in contact, which develops friction. With sufficient contact pressure, the friction will start rotating the other connector, which rotates the inner hub. To disconnect the power, we can simply release the pressure and the power is disconnected again. The two thick connectors we used here are just for demonstration purposes. In practice, multiple thin plates called friction plates and metal plates are used in order to increase the contact surface area. They work just like the two connectors we observed earlier. All the plates are held together with the help of a pressure plate. A set of springs provides the force required to develop the pressure between them. So how is the pressure on the plates released? To understand this, we need to understand the internal working mechanism of a clutch. Let's observe the cutaway view of the assembly for better understanding. A set of springs sit between the pressure plate and the inner hub and is held at the appropriate tension using clutch spring nuts. This develops friction between the plates and the power is transferred. In order to release the pressure, the pressure plate needs to be pushed outward, as shown. The force required to push the pressure plate comes from the rider pulling the clutch lever. As we pull the lever, a lifter cam mechanism activates. This mechanism forces a push rod to slide sideways. The push rod goes through the input shaft to the clutch assembly and pushes against the pressure plate, forcing it to slide outward, as shown. The movement of the components are exaggerated for demonstration purposes, but only a tiny movement is sufficient in real life. 